Hi, we're at the Thyroid Cancer Survivors Association Conference. I'm with Dr. Mark Zafirio. Dr. Zafirio, thank you for being here. Thank you, thank you for having me. It's always a pleasure to be here with the Thyca uh, organization and patients. Thank you so much. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself? So as you mentioned, I'm Mark Zafirio. I'm a head and neck surgeon at MD Anderson Cancer Center in Houston, Texas. I'm also the section chief of head and neck endocrine surgery there. Um, I love taking care of thyroid cancer patients. Um, that's, my, um, that's my passion. I also am married, um, no children uh, as of yet, uh, and uh, enjoy the outdoors. Terrific, thank you. Can you tell us about medullary thyroid cancer and is it different or how is it different than other thyroid cancers? So medullary uh, thyroid cancer is a unique subset of thyroid cancer. Um, it only makes up about two to three percent of overall thyroid cancer. Um, we're uh, more familiar with um, the differentiated thyroid cancer, papillary and follicular cancers. Those make up about 85 or 90 percent of thyroid cancers. Medullary thyroid cancers are uh, non-differentiated thyroid cancers, only about 2 to 3 percent of uh, thyroid cancers. They uh, arise from the parafollicular C cells, so they arise from different cells than the, um, than the majority of thyroid cancers, which are the differentiated thyroid cancers. Um, and they behave differently. So um, they secrete certain hormones. Um, they secrete a hormone called calcitonin. They also produce an antigen called carcinoembryonic antigen. They're neuroendocrine tumors. Um, so their pattern of spread and metastasis is also different. Um, they tend to metastasize to lymph nodes and other organs a little bit more commonly um, than the other uh, uh, differentiated thyroid cancers. And they also, um, about 20% of them have a, a hereditary or genetic component. And so all, all patients with uh, medullary thyroid cancer need to be tested for that. Is medullary thyroid cancer considered more serious or more difficult to treat? It certainly can be. It certainly, um, uh, it needs to be treated uh, in a center with particular expertise because they're, they're so rare. Again, um, you know, out of, out of 100 thyroid cancer patients, only two, of the, two or three of those will be medullary cancers. And so many physicians may only see one a year or they may, they may never see medullary thyroid cancer. So it really needs to be treated in a specialized center where there are expert surgeons, expert endocrinologists, and, and, and medical oncologists who really take care of, this, uh, of these types of patients, who study the disease, who have the clinical trials uh, available um, to study the, um, uh, this particular um, cancer. What are some of the treatment options for someone with medullary thyroid cancer? So medullary thyroid cancer is, is, is really a surgical disease and so um, 99 out of 100 patients, that's the first thing that they are going to have is a surgery. Uh, backing up a little bit even before the surgery though, um, in terms of, of the the types of things that need to be done. The first thing uh, they need is genetic testing. Like we mentioned, about 20% of medullary thyroid ca cancer patients are hereditary. So the first thing you need to do is, is the genetic testing. Most of them will be sporadic, meaning that they don't have a genetic uh, component. Um, and then you also need good uh, high definition ultrasound and CT scan to really get a good look at the thyroid and the neck. Um, so the surgeon can really plan the, the, the surgery accordingly. Um, and then, um, um, as mentioned, the, the treatment for the vast majority of patients, the initial treatment is surgery. Um, it, it's, it's important to have an experienced and skilled thyroid surgeon who really is going to do a very good surgery the first time. You want to have one surgery and one surgery only, um, if at all possible. Um, each subsequent surgery becomes more and more challenging. So you really want to, um, to do the, to the right surgery the first time, which is typically to remove the thyroid gland uh, and to remove the lymph nodes around the thyroid gland called the central compartment lymph nodes. For someone who's just received a diagnosis of medullary thyroid cancer, what are maybe the top three things that they should know or that they should ask their physician? So the most important thing uh, for medullary thyroid cancer patients is they come to a center with particular expertise um, and, um, and skill uh, in treating uh, medullary thyroid cancer in particular because it is such a rare disease. And that will include a consultation with a surgeon, a medical uh, oncologist or an endocrinologist, uh, both. Um, as well as um, skilled radiologists to do a really good high-definition ultrasound and CT scan uh, in many cases. Um, and a good um, uh, genetics counselor also to review sort of the, the issues that can be associated with the, with the um, uh, patients who have genetic uh, associated uh, hereditary medullary thyroid cancer. Um, pathologists, so all these are important components. So I would say the number one thing is to be at a, uh, at a um, 
center of excellence for uh, medullary thyroid uh, cancer, and those typically tend to be the tertiary care academic centers. Um, the number two thing I think to remember is that um, all patients need genetic testing. So if you haven't had genetic testing and you, and you have a diagnosis of medullary thyroid cancer, that's the, really the first thing that you need. Um, and then you need, um, third thing you need is the, is, the, is the good high definition imaging and ultrasound and CT imaging. And then all of that um, uh, really helps the surgeon to do the best surgery for the patient. Great, thank you. So let me shift a little bit and now talk about someone who's had medullary thyroid cancer for a long time mm -hmm. or has gone through that initial <laughs> surgery. What can <coughs> they expect over the long term? So after the initial surgery for medullary uh, thyroid cancer, typically what happens is a, a period of about three months after the surgery, you will recheck those hormones. So, so calcitonin is secreted by um, uh, medullary thyroid uh, tumors, and CEA is an antigen that, that the tumor also produces. So these are two tumor markers that will often be measured about three months after the surgery. And so the surgeon and the endocrinologist will look at those tumor markers and they'll see if there's still detectable tumor um, uh, anywhere in the body at that point. If there is, they may order further imaging studies to look at other organs of the body, to look at the lungs or the liver, uh, other places to, to see if there's any measurable disease there. And then they'll make any uh, treatment recommendations after that. Typically, most patients, um, even if they have still have elevated tumor markers after the surgery, they can still be observed for a period of time. They typically don't need to start treatment right away. But there are some patients um, with more advanced disease who have um, a measurable disease that can be seen and are maybe having symptoms that may require um, uh, some type of uh, targeted uh, drug therapy uh, treatment. Okay, one last question. Is there anything else you think medullary thyroid cancer patients should know or ask their doctors? So I think um, the, sur the ex experience, the expertise, and the skill of the surgeon is very important. Um, medullary thyroid cancer patients need to see a surgeon who is not only skilled in thyroid surgery but sees a lot of medullary thyroid carcinoma in particular because there are specific nuances to medullary thyroid uh, carcinoma that are important. As mentioned, you know, you have to remove the whole thyroid and the central compartment lymph nodes. Um, medullary thyroid carcinoma commonly spreads to these lymph nodes, so you don't want a situation where you just have your thyroid removed, for example, and not the lymph nodes, and then you see another surgeon and, and they're in a situation where they would have to do a second surgery to remove those lymph nodes. Those are all situations you want to avoid, so seeing that right surgeon the first time with the particular passion, experience, and expertise in treating patients with medullary thyroid carcinoma I think is very important. Um, the second thing I would say for medullary thyroid carcinoma patients is that there's a lot of hope and a lot of um, optimism for the future. So, um, you know, medullary thyroid carcinoma, you know, is, is commonly referred to. It's not one of the good thyroid cancers. It's, it's one of them can be one of the more aggressive thyroid cancers. Often patients can have uh, disease that's elsewhere in their body, but still these patients uh, typically do very well. It's not universal, but most patients do very well. In most patients, it's, it's a slowly growing disease over time. Um, that, um, that can be managed over a long period of time, and it can be managed effectively um, most of the time at the beginning with just observation. You just kind of follow along, make sure the disease is not growing too quickly, and then over time you may need to, to, do, um, to do some type of drug therapy. And there are a lot of, um, there's two FDA approved drugs for medullary thyroid carcinoma, but there are a lot of newer drugs that we're, we're currently studying in clinical trials that are targeting specific mutations, and these drugs are continuing to be studied and, and offer a lot of whole for the future for patients with more advanced medullary thyroid cancer. Let's end on that note, uh, a message of hope for those with medullary thyroid cancer. Dr. Zafiro, thank you so much for being here today. And thank you so much, Victoria, and thank you so much for Thyka for bringing us all together. It's such an honor and pleasure to be here with, with so many um, patients and to be able to share our expertise and experience with them. Thank you.